I've always strived for conducting high quality research that aims to really ask interesting questions about the brain, in my, in my specific case, about emotions, how we perceive and how we express emotions in the face and the voice, etc. And also about how different senses interact. So in my case, it's about how does the perception of somebody else's facial expression and the perception of your own activation of your own facial muscles, how do these two things interact and, and, and maybe mutually influence each other. And I think this is uh, ultimately important because it teaches us something about really the fundamental workings of the brain and the mind. And you know, even though I mostly have been investigating uh, in quotes, healthy, normal participants, ultimately I'm trying to find out ways to help people who uh, might be impaired in these aspects, so who might be expressing emotions less or might be impaired at perceiving uh, emotions expressed by others. I also want to make sure that my research guides and influences my teaching. So obviously at the University of Essex I'm teaching and I'm mentoring uh, and supervising students. And so being a researcher myself is fundamental in my goal to provide high quality research and supervision because it gives me the tools and the insight needed to understand also other people's research and, and better summarize it and, and present it. We can get a very accurate measure of cognitive processes that's going on in the brain. Very, very precise time points so even before you've actually pressed the button, we can see at different points on the head and at different points in time exactly what your brain's doing. And we're combining it with this stimulation technique for the first time. So this is something that uh, no other lab is doing at the moment. And as you can imagine, because the signal that we're recording with EEG is electrical in nature, it's quite problematic when we are putting a current into your face. So this current is going to spread all across your head. Mm -hmm. So we're going to see uh, noise, as we would call it, throughout all of these electrodes whenever we pass a current into your head. So we're developing some methods of, by which we can try to manage that so that we can have a more clear indication as to what's going on um, in your brain. So you're going to get stimulation for half a second and you'll see a face for half a second and then you just decide whether it's happy or sad by pressing one of two buttons on this keyboard. In half the cases there will be the stimulation and the other half there won't be any. In those cases just maintain a relaxed facial expression. Try not to tighten your cheeks or lips. So keeping a straight face. Just keep a nice, relaxed, straight face. So many people are concerned that this might cause some pain or discomfort, but we go through a rigorous calibration phase where participants get to determine and try out different intensities, and we try to find the most comfortable. We follow anatomy and guidelines to try and target the best place on the face. But to answer the question, is it painful? No, in fact, it's quite ticklish. Participants do end up in a little giggling fit for a good five to 10 minutes. It can be quite amusing. <laughs> I think I'm done. Great. So for the second part of the experiment, I'm gonna reposition the electrodes to a second muscle. We can activate the facial muscles in many ways. Voluntary, just by asking someone to smile, is the most common. But the face is an electrical circuit. Your brain sends electrical impulses down to the facial muscles. We're just trying the reverse. We're trying to activate the facial muscles as they naturally would, but without having to consciously make the person aware that they are smiling by making any reference to smiling. By keeping it outside of their awareness, we're hoping we can better understand the mechanisms behind it. Electricity is just one of the better ways to do this because it, that's how the muscle naturally activates to begin with. And we can actually do it non-invasively outside of the participant's awareness. We want to conduct fundamental research to better understand the role that the activation of facial muscles plays for one's own emotional feelings and the perception of other emotional expressions. 
Uh, this also goes back to testing in a more advanced, if you want, uh, and thorough way, certain aspects of theories of embodied cognition. So these theories basically say that we continuously take into consideration or our brain takes into account information that is coming in from, from the senses. So in this case, if I activate my facial muscles, it will influence how I perceive the world. But uh, one could imagine also that in the long run, if our research is successful, it could be used for other means, including for uh, therapeutical means. So we know that there are people who are somewhat impaired, they're less good at perceiving other people's facial expressions. And they might also be expressing themselves emotions less in the face, for example. I'm thinking of people with Parkinson's disease. They tend to still have, in quotes, normal facial expressions uh, that they produce voluntarily, but they don't very much have spontaneous facial expressions. And when they interact with other people in society, this can obviously be seen as a problem. They come across as, as being cold, if you want. Now, sort of uh, helping, for example, people with Parkinson's to reactivate their facial muscles and train them to smile in response to smiles, for example. This is totally something which might have beneficial effects, might help them to navigate better society and live a happier life. And facial neuromuscular electrical stimulation, as we're doing it in my lab, could be uh, used for that means. So, you know, that's one possible outcome of this technique.